I had a wall of mirrors that just had all of these little, uh, I can't remember what it's called, like a tiny little motor. But there's like a name for what it is. A name that's more specific than tiny electronic motor. Anyway, a wall of motors and I had to build 64 of these little housing things in the best way that I found was using thank you Angie uh, using a very thin plywood was the cheapest way that I could find that I could use with more or less the tools that I had and plywood is three millimeters thick and so it becomes and all the measurements for the cheap motors that I found, which the cheapest ones were from China. All of the specs on those motors were in centimeters or millimeters. And so I used the metric system while working with those things because all of the existing information for it was in millimeters. And it was much easier to use those general measurements. And it was to a uh, Try and convert everything to inches. Might make this a smaller grid. Blow it up in size. What I'm thinking of doing is sort of creating a single face snake thing. I might end up using this as two centimeter measurements because thinking about drawing this as a shape on this scale is not my favorite to consider. And now I'm going to just do a quarter of these measurements. For my own well-being, I don't want to spend way too much time today working on things. I almost forgot to start recording. Well, I started recording and realized that I was doing nothing and I'd rather have a clean start to the final video without having to go back and edit it. So I turned off recording and then started again, but forgot to start for a minute. Exciting stuff. Uh, trying to think if I've got anything to really talk that much about. Um, I made butter today by shaking some cream in a jar for a while. I've been making stuff 
over video chat making different recipes with my sister ever since uh, I guess like March-ish maybe April then doing odds and ends of things uh, usually it's dinner but she wanted to make sticky buns which required buying some heavy cream for uh, for a caramel sauce bit that's on there but it used like a quarter cup or something and there's not a way to buy just a quarter cup of cream so I had a bunch of cream left over just trying to figure out something to do with it and decided to try and make butter and it did and it worked fine it takes a little bit more effort than I remembered from like made butter one time in kindergarten I remember where you just like have a bunch of kids in a circle shaking a jar of cream and when it's separated into having what's it called having like a 20 kids taking a minute to like shake a jar of cream in a circle sounds weird um ultimately takes less effort because you got a bunch of folks working on the same deal but that's what I did today got some lunch and such stayed up late working on some other things Okay, uh, let me just make sure I understand that that's a lighter mark there. This guy here. And how far over is this? So this is four. Favorite recipes? Uh, oh, I have any. Oh, wait, it's four by six. Um, trying to think what all we've made. Um, hello, Fanny. Fanny, I'm not sure what your name is. Uh, we've made a few different things. Um, I think the one that I've made more than once is some uh, chicken kebabs. Or, yeah, let's call it kebabs. My sister's real into uh, looking at the recipes from Nadia from Great British Bake Off. Uh, and so uh, there was a kebab recipe that I tried. That's one of hers. Uh, and... My dad likes chicken, so I made some of that in there. Now let me count these up. I realize that I can do this a different way. If it's four by six, I can just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One by sixes. How far does this go? As a multiple of six goes to 18, which is right here. And then that means 12 in this way. Okay, that's my general shape. Now I'm going to take this down. I'll use some masking tape that I bought. Uh, I'm trying to think what else we've made. I forget where. Uh, I think here in Argentina is where the person who was asking about foods that we're making. I uh, don't think we've made anything that's remotely Argentinian. 
we've made some stuff that's like loosely Mexican in the sense that we've made like tacos and some soups and such. General marker. I was expecting that to happen much sooner. Okay, so what I wanted to maybe try and do is this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is 12. I can divide it. Every two. That's the case. I kind of want to try and make like a more snaking sort of face. That requires sort of. Working in squares. Maybe get a little bit closer here. So you can see a little bit more. And I might as well work with my pen so that it shows up better. I'm just doing some design stuff within this square. Honestly, if I'm doing this, I might as well do it in Sharpie. Okay. We're going full chunky guy. Just create some outlines. Hit a fatal error of going too far in one direction because these are they're, uh, whatever. This is stills. Unless yeah, I just want to deal with stills today. Um, or one still. This might end up just being one. Just gonna, I'll just leave it as being slightly slightly off. Maybe I'll come back and divide some of these. Okay.
Uh, I've mostly listened to, I forget the name of the one album that, I think it's called like Unreleased Demos, I forget. Um, when I'm choosing music for reels more recently, I've just been like going on the Spotify and putting my liked songs on shuffle and seeing what pops up. And that was one that popped up, and I got a little bit more of a response to playing some of his things than I have from anything else other than maybe when I shared a, a Raymond Scott song that uh, Jade Dilla sampled pretty heavily and tripped people up a little bit because um, they didn't know that it was that much of a sample, but not in a bad way, just uh, a lot of folks aren't as familiar with Raymond Scott. I wasn't uh, until it was something that kept popping up as a recommendation when I was using a uh, last FM, uh, which I still have, and I think that it does a better job than anything else at curating music because it's user run and the people who are there are making a different sort of effort to be there um but i was listening to a lot of mad lib and gorillas and odds and ends of other things along those lines and i was like why is it popping up with this old dude who's playing a bunch of odds and ends of electronic music and then I uh, spent more time with it and was like oh it's because all of these people sampled him he was a composer and electronic music experimenting guy and he has a lot of things that are experimental and they're good for sampling because it's just like a, it's a, uh, like a raw file. It's like a, almost a stock image of music. Because it doesn't have, or it's like a drum machine or something. It's something that doesn't have uh, all of this additional layers of information on top of it. It's just like, here's a note on us, and then here's a scale, and it's distinct sounding because it's earlier electronic music, so it has a lot more of something of a texture to it because it's got a lot more analog components to it. And so he got sampled a bunch, and Jay Dilla was one of the people who sampled him. Uh, heavily for the song Lightworks. What is the magic that makes one's eyes sparkle and gleam, light up the skies? The name of the game is Lightworks. Do -do 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 boom, 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 boom. Uh, that guy. Pretty much all of that is Raymond Scott and then Dilla came in and added some bits of things here and there. But there are a few examples of songs that are very heavily sampled uh, that I still really enjoy and appreciate the art of finding something that fits into that sort of aesthetic. Uh, Daft Punk has a number of those songs too. Uh, most specifically, uh, the one that comes to mind is um, Robot Rock which is essentially just a breakwater sample. It's the start of that song, and then every now and again they have a vocoder that goes over it saying, Robot Rock. Robot Rock. Thank you. I've never been to India, but uh, there's a decent uh, population of Indian immigrants close by to where I'm at. Um, I haven't been as much recently to that part of town just because I've been staying home. 
pretty extensively, but uh, harkening back to some of the stuff I've cooked, I've cooked a few Indian things um, while doing quarantine stuff. I've made a lot of dal because it's easy, and most of the time I have the ingredients because the lentils and the rice are dried goods, so I don't have to like worry about whether or not the ingredients have gone bad. Um, I also, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, was Indian and they got a, when he and my sister were visiting at some point, they wanted to have a pressure cooker available. And so I've got a stovetop pressure cooker that's here. And I use it a lot for, for rice. Cause it's easy to use that. Um, otherwise I haven't really used pressure cookers that much in my life. They also got a spice tiffin, uh, that has, uh, what is it, um, turmeric, uh, coriander, cumin mixture, chili powder, garam masala, and, or cumin seeds. Um, I'm trying to think what else is in that. I think that smells of it. There's like six in there. I like some spicy food uh, whenever, my sister likes spicier food than I do. Um, so whenever we're cooking on the bit, uh, over the internet, doing video chat stuff, uh, she usually increases the spice or tells me, like, you should probably back up on this. Um, Indian spice is a different sort of spice than, like, uh, Mexican spicy or Chinese Szechuan, I forget. For like it's a different kind of spice all around. Like uh, Indian spice usually it's like here's more of a flavor with uh, some of the more Chinese spice. It's more like this is just peppery and it's gonna or chili oil. Uh, it's gonna numb your mouth a bit. Or Indian food is like this is spicy but I enjoy the flavor a bit more or it's a little bit more layered in there um, and then sometimes Mexican spice just takes me by surprise hello Sam Uh, I'm going to try and talk more on samples, but it's not the most interesting thing to see somebody who is slightly distracted and talking about other things uh, go through and talk about just samples you might have heard in music. Uh, oh, was it Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger by Daft Punk is pretty much just, uh, it's... Edwin Bird song, Cola Bottle Baby. I can't play music so much in this live stream because it'll get flagged. Um, but uh, Cola Bottle Baby by Edwin Bird song is uh, more or less what harder, better, faster, stronger is. Which is funny because then it's sampled by Kanye West pretty heavily for song stronger but what he takes from it is what Daft Punk added to the song which is the vocoder work it do it faster makes us stronger more than ever our, our work is never over so that's not part of the uh, original Edwin Bird song version but wait no that's Robot Rock um, but 
the other music. Anyway, uh, I studied graphic design in college. Kanye is an interesting dude. I listened a lot to uh, my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy in college. It was like a slow release of all that music. Having Good Fridays and such. And then it was the first Pitchfork review in a while that had gotten a perfect 10. Uh, Power, that samples... 21st century. I don't want Kanye to be present. I don't want. It's just a. Like, I understand the novelty of it for some folks, but uh, it's already issues as, as they be. I don't want additional performance of politics in the United States. Um. I also just don't think he'd be great at it. He's not built for that sort of deal. Um, but uh, Power by Kanye West samples 21st Century Schizoid Man by uh, King Crimson, which is early, like, psychedelic metal-ish stuff. Um, came out about the same time as... Black Sabbath's first album, I think like 1970 or 71, um, and it has a lot of similarities uh, style-wise, uh, 21st Century Schizoid Man to um, Iron Man, eh, but uh, it samples, Power by Kanye West samples that song. 21st century schizoid man. I haven't really listened much to Alt J. Of, I think like a lot of folks. Um, once I graduated from college, my ability to keep up with music plummeted. Um, just like every now and again I find an album and I listen to uh, that but it's usually something else I've gotten more into singer-songwriter sort of stuff and more uh, female-led groups and musicians that have gotten a little bit older I don't know if it's that I've gotten uh, more comfortable with uh, having emotional connection they're just trying to be more aware of uh, the vulnerability of different music and myself and just being a little bit more honest with some things but uh, the last few years I've been listening a lot more to people like Mitski and Courtney Barnett Uh, both of them in concert. I saw Courtney Barnett kind of three times, but I only paid for one of them. Uh, I worked, did some work with a group of folks that I go by Mr. Giff, um, but they did work for Pemberton Music Festival, 
out in uh, British Columbia. Um, and she performed there at that music festival, which has since shuttered. I think I went to the last one, but uh, that was a weird sort of thing because it was like 2 p.m. And so not many people were at that stage at the time, and it wasn't one of the main stages. Um, but then when I saw her in New York, it was at... Uh, like a couple weeks later from that and the venue was like decent sized and she was the headliner and so that experience was like a lot more energetic. Uh, I did some work for Courtney Barnett through Tumblr and that's how I sort of started listening more to her things. Um, But it was, uh, Tumblr did like a live event with a South by thing, South by Southwest uh, performance. And I just was making some animated GIFs based on the uh, illustrations she did of chairs for Sometimes I Sit and Think, Sometimes I Just Sit uh, for that album. But it was a much different experience seeing her at a venue where she was a headliner and was like the dedicated performer and seeing just with, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so, a couple dozen folks midday outside at a festival it has a much different feel. And it points to how context really influences your experience of things. Um, and then I saw her um, at an old theater when she was uh, touring with Kurt Vile. Uh, and that was a theater that I know that's like a old renovated theater that isn't as uh, popular as other venues in this uh, area. And so the, but I'm familiar with the venue, so I was able to, when I, sorry, when I ordered tickets online, the default was putting me in the center but like 20 rows back but I'm familiar with the theater and know that I just chose my own seats and just did front row but far to the right because the uh, stage isn't that wide and it's so I got to be in front row for that bit which was nice front row is very nice because you can sit down and watch the show, or you can stand up if you want to, and it doesn't impede your view at all. That's the main thing that I liked about being front row. It's not a huge theater, but uh, I hadn't had that specific experience before. Anytime that I've worked at festivals or something, you can get to the very front section, for a couple songs, usually when you perform or when you are like a photographer for a show or something, you usually have like the first couple uh, songs presses in the front bit and then after those songs are done, then they clear the, the pit. And it just is a show, and some musicians will perform in a way that reflects a resentment of that. So they'll be, like, at the back of the stage not doing way too much for the first maybe three songs, two or three songs. And then after that, they bring all their energy, which it's fine. Do whatever.
I haven't gone to a bunch of shows, but I've been to a few. I think the last one I went to was uh, Snail Mail. And I saw it because uh, Sasami was the opener. And I saw Sasami because I follow Mitsuki and Japanese Breakfast and such. A uh, bunch of different Asian American musicians. That are all nice and supportive. Uh, Sasami was one of the openers for Mitsuki when I saw Mitsuki. Um, and then Snail Mail played as the headliner. And I think Sasami was one of two openers. I don't recall. Um... Uh, I really liked seeing Outcast, um, because it was a good mix of energy and they had some live musicians playing the horn section. Um, uh, Missy Elliott, Kendrick Lamar was good. I like seeing LCD Sound System and David Byrne. Um, Queens of the Stone Age was one of my first ones, and they just sort of like played music hard. Um, they Might Be Giants was an early one for me. I went to a free They Might Be Giants show in Williamsburg a few years ago, and it just was like a torrential downpour, and the openers were a bunch of alternative comedians like Jim Gaffigan, uh, Patton Oswald, I think. I think Todd Berry, Eugene Merman, uh, Kristen Schull was there. It was like a bunch of people who work on Bob's Burgers and uh, in the past worked on uh, home movies. That animated show. Um, it was a free concert of Williamsburg Waterfront, torrential downpour, um, but it was... They, they weren't together. Uh, I'm just naming off things that I saw. Uh, David Byrne had his own thing that was at a festival in New York Panorama uh, that is also another now defunct uh, festival but at that uh, They Might Be Giants free show it was like one of the whitest shows that I've been to, like culturally, like white nerd dudes. There's a mix. They have a different collection of fans that's not entirely just white folks, but it felt like uh, every other person had, or every person pretty much had my aesthetic going. Um, that it's alt comedians opening for They Might Be Giants, uh, so it, there's a, a look, a style, and a, an aesthetic for those folks. M one of the most bespeckled audiences that I've ever been a part of. Mitski was one of the shortest audiences that I've ever been a part of, and when she was on stage at some point, she was like, Hey, everyone, if you could just look behind you and see if someone shorter than you is behind you and maybe let them in front of you, that'd be very nice. Um, so she was nice in that way. Seems like a nice person in general. Um, David Byrne and LCD would have been a very white nerdy audience as well but in a different way than they might be giants perhaps a bit more pretentious i don't know maybe they might be giants would be more pretentious i can't make a judgment call exactly on that Outcast was a lot of fun. I kind of wish that I had 
made the effort at that point in time. They hadn't announced their tour uh, ending in Atlanta. They did like a um, like four days. They did a bunch of shows in Atlanta, and it was at last ATL AST. Um, and I went to school in Atlanta. And so that's where I like gained a different appreciation for Outcast. I had my passive appreciation for him beforehand, but then gained a lot more of an awareness and interest in their cultural significance living in Atlanta. Um, but they did a series of shows that just had a bunch of guests and everyone seemed very nice and such, but I kind of wish that I had uh, gone to that show instead of I went to one in Louisville, Kentucky, which was still good, but it's not the same as being in Atlanta for their, like, homecoming. But a lot of good energy at that show. They were the headliners for a day at a festival. Female front bands. Uh, the Slits is a personal favorite. Um, I like Fiona Apple. I'm trying to think what I've been listening to more recently. Last night I listened to, for the first time in a minute, uh, Angel Olsen. Uh, there's a lot of 60s girl groups that I like a lot. Um, and then there's a bunch of... Uh, in the 60s in France, there was a sort of movement called the Yeah Yeah Girls. Y-E-Y-E. -E. Um, people like uh, Francois Hardy. And Marie Laferrette. Um, there's a bunch aesthetically that I like from then, that point in time. Uh, 60s girl groups, you've got stuff like The Ronettes, Darlene Love, Leslie Gore. I'm having a harder time naming these offhand. Uh, And then you got other ones like the Breeders. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a typo. I don't know the band Slints, L-I-N-T-S. I was talking about uh, Slits, L-S-L-I-T-S. Uh, they're a little bit older. Uh, X-Ray Specs, Susie and the Banshees. Blondie. Tom Tom Club. Slater Kenny. That's fine. I just didn't know if there was a band called the Slints. There probably there might be. Um, I'm trying to think. Right now I'm looking left and right because I've got some records on either side of me. But I can't remember what's there. Uh, they're female hip-hop artists that I like that are older. You got like Queen Latifah. Um, I don't know why I can't think of another one on that. 
salt and pepper. As far as I've got physical records, uh, there's Mitski, Fiona Apple, Courtney Barnett. I'm just curious if I have any other female led bands in my collection right here. The slits, my bloody Valentine sometimes. That's Mantronics, Waves, Joy Clinton. I think that's the only actual physical records I have from female led groups. Oh, Joanna Grusom? This is one that a lot of people aren't as familiar with that I'm a big fan of. Is that there? Joanna Grusom? I saw them. They were good. That's where I got this record. Not Joanna Newsom, Joanna Grusom. So it's a bit of a like pun name, but I still really like them. Specifically that album, Weird Sister. I don't think they, I think they have that album and Peanut Butter, I think are the two that they have. That album has some songs that I like, uh, where I like when songs have elements of like pretty sounding violent things, um, or ones that it's like the most harsh part of the song is sung very lightly or calmly. Uh, something like uh, My Bloody Valentine sometimes has some lead singing from Woman well, I Feel Bad because I forget everyone's name in that band. In most bands, I forget the names of folks, except for Talking Heads, I know Tina Weymouth and David Byrne offhand. I got into a lot of noise pop in college, and just noisier things in general. So I went through and listened to a lot of older uh, punk, post-punk, uh, new wave stuff that came out of largely uh, Kevin Shields as a drummer and then also sometimes Talking Heads just has maybe I'm wrong that that sounds familiar I might be wrong um sometimes Talking Heads has like 30 people on stage from various bands I got into them uh when I went to a midnight screening of Stop Making Sense. I went to a few different midnight screenings when I was in high school at the local theater. So I first saw Full Metal Jacket and uh, Last Crusade, Indiana Jones' Last Crusade and Talking Heads. Stop making sense. Um, and like I went home, even though it was like probably 2 a.m. ish around that point, and tried to not legally, but to find whatever talking head songs I could find, uh, specifically uh, Naive Melody. Or this is a place, Naive Melody, 
and when I got the album version, it wasn't as good sounding to me. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't as much of a sort of experience as the live version from Stop Making Sense. But I got into a bunch of noisy stuff uh, that's like shoegaze adjacent, but like if the people don't care about melody as much, which I'm fine not being as uh, as aware of the technical elements of a lot of music. Um, so I was listening to a lot of stuff like Waves, um, Fiddler, uh, Ringo Death Star, and then there's a lot of noisy stuff that came out of Scotland in the mid-late 80s. Uh, big fan of the band Scars, stuff like Orange Juice. Um, I'm drawing a blank on a lot of those names. Uh, and I'm capturing. Let's see if this will scan to the spot that I want it to. I've been having some weird issues with. Uh, I know parquet courts loosely, but not super well. It's like a, it's sort of a inconsistent how and why I listen to certain groups location it's going to desktop live designs 1021 which is here 1021 20 grid faces scan at 1200 I listen to some parquet courts um let me just pull up while that's scanning for a second. I've got some playlists that I think it's just called like Clang or something because I had a radio show with my friend, yep, Clang, uh, where he played more shoegazy stuff to add more of a sense of uh, uh, Photoshop open. Not yet. Let me draw, open that up, and then I'll jump into it. Uh, he played stuff. He plays music here and there. He plays music. That sounds insulting. Oh. And uh, he has a little bit more invested in the technical elements of. Let's see if this actually did go where it's supposed to. Uh, of music, so he gets more frustrated with things that are just noisy and repetitious or not as complex. Uh, so I would play like Fiddler and he'd be like, this isn't that great. And I'd be like, but it's fun. Um, Quinn over there. But uh, he would be more into things like Swerve driver. My Bloody Valentine. Suvlaki Space Station. Oop, why is this? This is odd. Oh, because the color is wrong. Okay. Um, and then I would play a little bit noisier stuff, a lot of waves, Ringo Death Star. Uh, I'll just talk through it in a minute uh, after I... Here. 
I'm just gonna just do this and then talk about music for a minute. Okay, let me just look over and see what stuff is filled. No, not quite. I get that. Down a little. Change the size. JPEG filled small. And then I can. Oh, oh no, it's too big. Display capture. Image. Okay. Browse. Like size 21. Preface is small. Okay. Grab this. Make it a little bit smaller. Showcase it side by side. I have heard of No Age. Um, I like No Age. Now I'm just going to go through this list of stuff. Uh, the Babies, Base Realm of Death, uh, Best Coast, Black Tambourine, Bleeding Knees Club, you might enjoy. Um, Charlie and the Moon Hearts, The Damned, Dirty Beaches, Dum Dum Girls, Eat Skull, Fungi Girls. I like Hunks and his Punks a lot. Um, Japan Droids, Las Robertas, Lovers, but L O V V E R S, Male Bonding, The Manhattan Love Suicides, Mess, uh, Meth Teeth. Uh, if you like noisier stuff, you can go for that. No Age, Ringo Death Star, and that's another pun one. The Seeds, uh, Ty Seagal, Waves. That's all the stuff that's thrown in there, but, uh, if you like that sort of stuff and you haven't ever spent time with surf rock, you might enjoy that. There's a lot of surf rock you can get into. Um, I really like The Ventures, specifically. Uh, there's a really good album that's a live album of theirs. Uh, they toured Japan a lot and continue to tour Japan. Well, not right now. But they toured Japan a lot. They had various lineups. Um, but uh, The Ventures Live in Japan, 1965, is a very good album that's interesting to have this sort of very specific cultural thing. Or very specific for my awareness of cultural things. That it isn't something that's brought to me so easily that I sort of found... Um, but yeah, like, there's a lot of noisy stuff that has surf rock influence or plays with it. Stuff like, uh, Guantanamo Baywatch. It's another pun name. Um, noisier punk things like The Mummies. Uh, then you have stuff like Fiddler and, uh, Waves, which has sort of beach party vibes to it. Um, coastal specific sort of things. So that's a lot of West Coast vibe. Uh, if you're looking for surf rock, then you got stuff like Dick Dale and various names that he has. Uh, and he's best known for his interpolation of the Greek song. It's like a Greek folk song of Misserlou. Um, which is super well known if you don't know it by name. 
you're probably familiar with it. Anyway, uh, I got more into surf rock after watching uh, Pulp Fiction for the first time. Because the start of it is Mr. Lou and then Mr. Lou's been used a bunch since then. And before that, it's not a particularly new thing at that point in time. Uh, but Surfaris, uh, Ventures. Let me, I've got a different play. I forget a lot of names. I was better with naming stuff offhand. Link Ray, Del Shannon. If you like a little bit noisier stuff, uh, there's Man or Astro Man. Uh, I think that you could look at. I think my thing is public. Shared copy profiles. Uh, yeah, it should be public. Yeah, you can follow it. Uh, it's can I kicked it? Uh, oh, let's write it down. Or do that. Can I throw text on the screen? That would help. I can just do that. Okay, text. This is a gradient. Make it black and blue. Make it weird. No, just make it black. Or it looks like can I kick edit? It is a tribe reference. Um, I think. Let me see if Clang is a public playlist. I think it is. Oh, okay. Clang is public. Let's see what public playlists I have. I'm not sure what all, but can I kicked it? Um, you can look at that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording because I'm done with that. Bit.